Genre Roman 2 Caminos. Genre Roman 2 Caminos or Caminos. 13 September 1087 8 April 1143 was Byzantine Emperor from 1118 to 1143. Also known as John the Beautiful or John the Good, he was the eldest son of Emperor Alexios and MBSP Achaemenos and Irene Dukaina and the second emperor to rule during the Comnenian restoration of the Byzantine Empire. As he was born to a reigning emperor, he had the status over. John was a pious and dedicated monarch who was determined to undo the damage his empire had suffered following the Battle of Manzikert half a century earlier. John has been assessed as the greatest of the Comnenian emperors. In the course of the quarter century of his reign, John made alliances with the Holy Roman Empire in the West, decisively defeated the Pechenegs, Hungarians and Serbs in the Balkans, and personally led numerous campaigns against the Turks in Asia Minor. John's campaigns fundamentally changed the balance of power in the East, forcing the Turks onto the defensive and restoring to the Byzantines many towns, fortresses and cities across the Anatolian Peninsula. In the southeast, John extended Byzantine control from the meander in the West all the way to Cilicia and Tossus in the East. In an effort to demonstrate the Byzantine ideal of the Emperor's rule as the leader of the Christian world, John marched into Muslim Syria at the head of the combined forces of Byzantium and the Crusader states, yet despite the grave vigour with which he pressed the campaign, John's hopes were disappointed by the evasiveness of his Crusader allies and their reluctance to fight alongside his forces. Under John, the Empire's population recovered to about 10 million people. A quarter century of John Roman II's reign is less well recorded by contemporary or near contemporary writers than the reigns of either his father, Alexios I, or his son, Manuel I. In particular, little is known of the history of John's domestic rule or policies. Physical appearance and character. The Latin historian William of Tyre described John as short and unusually ugly, with eyes, hair, and complexion so dark he was known as a moor. Yet, despite his physical appearance, John was known as Callians, John the Good, or John the Beautiful, the epithet referred to his character. Both his parents were unusually pious and John surpassed them. Members of his court were expected to restrict their conversation to serious subjects only. The food served at the emperor's table was very frugal and John lectured courtiers who lived in excessive luxury. His speech was dignified, but he engaged in repartee on occasion. All accounts agree that he was a faithful husband to his wife, an unusual trait in a medieval ruler. Despite his personal austerity, John had a high conception of the imperial rule and would appear in full ceremonial splendour when this was advantageous. John was famed for his piety and his remarkably mild and just reign. He is considered an exceptional example of a moral ruler at a time when cruelty was the norm. He is reputed never to have condemned anyone to death or mutilation. Shardy was dispensed lavishly. For this reason, he has been called the Byzantine Marcus Aurelius. By the example of his personal morality and piety, he effected a notable improvement in the manners of his age. Descriptions of him and his actions indicate that he had great self-control and personal courage, and was an excellent strategist and general. Accession to the throne John Roman II succeeded his father as ruling Basilis in 1118, but had already been crowned co-emperor by Alexios A between 1 September and early November 1092. Despite this coronation, the accession of John was contested. That Alexia was out favoured John to succeed him is made obvious by the elevation of his son to the position of co-emperor. However, Alexia's influential wife Irene favoured the season like Quora's Brienne was the husband of her eldest child Anna Comnene. Anna, who in infancy had been betrothed to her father's first co-emperor Constantine Daukas of self hobbit obvious aspirations to power and the throne. During Alexia's final illness, both wife and daughter exploited his physical weakness to apply pressure on him in support of their agenda for the succession. Alexios endured these constant demands without formally changing his intended successor. As Alexios lay dying in the monastery of the Mangona on 15 August 1118, John, relying on trusted relatives, especially his brother Isaac Caminos, gained entry into the monastery and obtained the imperial signet ring from his father. He then assembled his armed followers and rode to the great palace, gathering the support of the citizenry on the way. The palace guard at first refused to admit John without clear proof of his father's wishes, however, the mob surrounding the new emperor simply forced an entry. In the palace, John was acclaimed emperor. Irene, taken by surprise, was unable either to persuade her son to step down or to induce Nicoras to contend for the throne. However, this account of events, in particular the involvement of John's sister in any palace coup attempt during the days around Alexios's death, has been disputed in a recent biography of Anna. Alexios was died the night following his son's decisive move to take power. John refused to attend his father's funeral despite the pleas of his mother because he feared a counter coup. However, in the space of a few days, his position seemed secure. Within a year of his accession, however, John Roman II uncovered a conspiracy to overthrow him which implicated his mother and sister. Anna's husband, Nick Warros, had little sympathy with her ambitions, and it was his lack of support which doomed the conspiracy. Anna was stripped of her property, which was offered to the emperor's friend John Axart. 
Axe Search wisely declined and his influence ensured that Anna's property was eventually returned to her and that John Roman II and his sister became reconciled, at least to a degree. Irene retired to a monastery and Anna seems to have been effectively removed from public life, taking up the less active occupation of historian. However, Nick Warrows remained on good terms with his brother-in-law. One of the very few records of John's own words concerns the plot against him. He says that after ascending the throne, God destroyed the cunning plots of my visible and invisible enemies and rescued me from every trap subject and all my enemies under my feet. To save God his own succession, John crowned his young son Alexios as co-emperor around September 1119. Military and Civil Administration The family intrigues that challenged his succession to the throne probably contributed to John's approach to rulership, which was to appoint men from outside the imperial family to high office. This was a radical departure from the methods of his father, who had used the imperial family and its many connections to fill almost all senior administrative and military posts. John Axach was John Roman II's closest advisor and was his only intimate friend. Axach was a Turk captured as a child at the siege of Nikit, who had been given as a gift to John's father. Emperor Alexios had thought him a good companion for his son, and so he had been brought up alongside the prince in the imperial household. Axouch was immediately appointed Grand Domestic in Greek, Mu Epsilon Gamma for Sigma Delta Omicron, Mu Epsilon Sigma Tau Iota Cap Omicron Sigma Megas Domesticos upon the accession of John Roman II. The Grand Domestic was the commander-in-chief of the Byzantine armies. It has been suggested that references to Axe such as possession of the imperial seal early in the reign of John's successor Manuel and meant that he was, in addition to his military duties, the head of the civil administration of the empire. This was an unofficial position known at the time as the Messizen, an equivalent to a visor or prime minister. Such an appointment was remarkable, and a radical departure from the nepotism that had characterised the reign of Alexios I. The imperial family harboured some degree of resentment at this decision, which was reinforced by the fact that they were required to make obeisance to John Axach whenever they met him. Sean's unwillingness to allow his family to influence his government to any great extent was to remain constant for the rest of his reign. Sean appointed a number of his father's personal retainers to senior administrative posts, men such as Eustathios Kamets, as Michael Litz's Stipeots and George de Connors. These were men who had been politically eclipsed during the ascendancy exercised by John's mother in the later years of the reign of Alexios I. A number of new men were raised to prominence by John Roman II. These included Gregory Taranites, who was appointed Protovasarios, Manuel and Emmas, and Theodore Vatat, as the latter two also became his sons-in-law. John's marriage policy of bringing new families into the imperial orbit may have been directed towards lessening the influence of certain prominent aristocratic clans such as the Daucos, Diogenes and Melusinos families, some of which had produced emperors themselves in the past. Despite his move away from close reliance on the imperial family and its connections, John's court and government had many similarities to that of his father, not least in its serious tone and piety. Indeed, an extant collection of political advice couched in poetic form called the Mausai are attributed to Alexios I. The Maesai are addressed directly to John Roman II and exhort him, amongst other things, to maintain justice during his reign and a full treasury. Alexios' advice on rulership therefore continued to be available to his son even after the old emperor's death. The increase in military security and economic stability within Byzantine Western Anatoly created by John Roman II's campaigns allowed him to begin the establishment of a formal provincial system in these regions. The theme province of Thraxian was re-established, with its administrative centre at Philadelphia. A new theme named Malos and Melanidian was created to the south of Thraxian. Conspiracies of the Sebastocrator Isaac The younger brother of John Roman II, Isaac, had been of essential support during the accession crisis. However, despite being given the highest of core titles, that of Sebastocrator, Isaac later became estranged from his brother and became an active conspirator. With trusted advisors of his own choosing, such as John Axoch, and later the support of his son and core emperor Alexios, John Roman II offered no meaningful role to Isaac in the governance of the empire. In the reign of Alexios, Isabastocratus had wielded considerable power, and Isaac would have had an expectation of a similar level of authority being devolved on himself. This thwarted ambition is probably what disillusioned Isaac with his brother's rule. Isaac aimed at replacing his brother as emperor. In 1130, John became aware of a plot involving Isaac and other magnates as he was leaving to campaign against the Turks. When John tried to seize Isaac, the latter escaped and fled to the Danish Demir Gazi, who received him and later sent him to the breakaway Byzantine regime of the Gebrids in Trebizond. Isaac then became the guest of Massoud, the Seljuk Sultan of Rum, and subsequently of Leo, the Prince of Cilician Armenia. That Isaac was seeking aid from these princes in a bid to take the Byzantine throne by force is highly likely. Such a coalition did not materialise, but Isaac seems to have retained strong support in Constantinople. 
At 11.30, Tudor had to return from campaign in haste, where news reached him that conspirators in Constantinople had made an appeal to Isaac to become their ruler. The triumph that John celebrated following his capture of Castamuni in 1133 can be seen as being a public affirmation of John's legitimacy as emperor embodied in the celebration of the defeat of external foes. The brothers were briefly reconciled in 1138, and Isaac returned to Constantinople, however, a year later Isaac was idol to Heracle Pontica, where he remained for the rest of John's life. In the extensive artwork that Isaac commissioned, he made much of his Bofrirogenid status and his relationship with his imperial father Alexios I, but he made little or no reference to his relationship to his brother John or to the title of Sepistocrator that he had received from him. Diplomacy The central tenet of the foreign policy of John Roman II in the West was to maintain an alliance with the German Emperor's Holy Roman Empire. This was necessary to limit the threat posed by the Normans of southern Italy to Byzantine territory in the Balkans. This threat became especially acute after Roger Roman II of Sicily made himself supreme in southern Italy and assumed the title of king. Emperor Lothair Roman III had Byzantine backing, including a large financial subsidy for his invasion of Norman territory in 1136, which reached as far south as Pori. Pope Benison Roman II, with the church's possessions in Italy under threat by Roger Roman II, who supported under Pope Anaclesis Roman II, was also parted to the alliance of Lothair and John Roman II. However, this alliance proved unable to resist Roger, who extracted by force a recognition of his royal title from the Pope in 1139 Treaty of Magnano. Lotte's successor Conrad Roman III was approached in 1140 for royal German bride for John's youngest son Mamael. Bertha of Salzburg, Conrad's sister-in-law, was chosen and dispatched to Byzantium. At much the same time, Roger Roman II replied to John Roman II for an imperial bride for his son, but was unsuccessful. John's penchant for interfering with his wife's family, the rulers of Hungary, was problematic. The welcome accorded to ousted claimants of the Hungarian throne in Constantinople was seen by the Byzantines as a useful insurance policy and source of political leverage. However, the Hungarians treated this interference as a fighting matter. A Hungarian alliance with the Serbs produced serious consequences for continued Byzantine dominance in the Western Balkans. In the east, John attempted, like his father, to exploit the differences between the Seljuk Sultan of Iconium and the Danish Mended dynasty controlling the northeastern inland parts of Anatolia. In 1134, the Seljuk Sultan Massoud provided troops for John's attack on the Danish Mented city of Kastamuni, reoccupied immediately after the Byzantine conquest of 1133. However, the alliance proved unreliable as the Seljuk troops abandoned the expedition to camping during the night. In the Crusader states of the Levant, it was generally admitted that the Byzantine claims over Antioch were legally valid, though it was pragmatically viewed that only when the Byzantine emperor was in a position to enforce them militarily were they likely to be recognised in practice. The high point of John's diplomacy in the Levant was in 1137, when he extracted formal homage from the rulers of the Principality of Antioch, County of Edessa and the County of Tripoli. The Byzantine desire to be seen as holding a level of suzerainty over all of the Crusader states was taken seriously, as evidenced by the alarm shown in the Kingdom of Jerusalem when John informed King Folk of his plan for an armed pilgrimage to the Holy City 1142. Religious Matters The reign of John Roman II was taken up with almost constant warfare, and unlike his father who delighted in active participation in theological and doctrinal disputes, John appears to have been content to leave ecclesiastical matters to the ecumenical patriarch of Constantinople and the church hierarchy. Only when religion impinged directly on imperial policy, as in relations with the papacy and the possible union of the Greek and Latin churches, did John take an active part. He organised a number of disputations between Greek and Latin theologians. John, alongside his wife who shared in his religious and charitable works, is known to have undertaken church building on a considerable scale, including construction of a monastery of Christ Patricus Eric Mosque in Constantinople. This monastery, with its three churches, has been described as one of the most important and influential architectural constructions of Middle Byzantine Constantinople. Attached to the monastery was a hospital of five wards open to people of all social classes. The hospital was staffed by trained laymen doctors rather than monks. The monastery also served as the imperial sepulchre for the Comnenian dynasty. Very active persecution of the followers of the Paulician and Bogomil heresies characterised the last few years of the reign of Alexios I. No records from the reign of John mention such persecution, though countermeasures against heresy by the Byzantine Church remained in force. A permanent synod in Constantinople investigated the writings of a deceased monk named Constantine Trismelos which had been circulating in certain monasteries. These works were ordered to be burnt by the Patriarch of Constantinople, Leo Stipes, in May 1140 on the grounds that they incorporated elements of Bogomil belief and practices. One of the few members of the imperial family to be placed in an important position by John was his cousin, Adrian Comnenos, son of John's uncle, the Sebastoc creator Isaac. Adrian had become a monk, adopting the monastic name John, and had accompanied the emperor on his campaigns of 1138. 
Soon afterwards, Adrian was appointed Archbishop of Bulgaria as John Roman IV of Oort. Bulgaria was an autocephalous see and required a prestigious man as Archbishop. Military Exploits Though he fought a number of notable pitched battles, the military strategy of John Roman II relied on taking and holding fortified settlements in order to construct defensible frontiers. John personally conducted approximately 25 sieges during his reign. The Pechenegs destroyed 1122. The Pechenegs destroyed 1122. In 1119-1121, John defeated the Seljuk Turks, establishing his control over southwestern Anatolia. However, immediately afterwards, in 1122, John quickly transferred his troops to Europe to counter a Pechenic invasion across the Danube frontier into Parestrian. These invaders had been auxiliaries of the Prince of Kiev. John surrounded the Pechenegs as they burst into Thrace, tricked them into believing that he would grant them a favourable treaty, and then launched a devastating surprise attack upon their fortified camp. The ensuing battle of Uri was hard fought, John was wounded in the leg by an arrow, but by the end of the day the Byzantine army had won a crushing victory. The decisive moment of the battle was when John led the Varangian Guard, largely composed of Englishmen, to assault defensive Pechenig wagon logger, employing their famous axes to hack their way into the battle for the effective end to the Pechenegs as an independent people. Many of the captives taken in the conflict were settled as soldier formers within the Byzantine frontier. Conflict with Venice 1124-1126 Conflict with Venice 1124-1126 after his accession, John Roman II had refused to confirm his father's 1082 treaty with the Republic of Venice, which had given the Italian Republic unique and generous trading rights within the Byzantine Empire. Yet the change in policy was not motivated by financial concerns. An incident involving the abuse of a member of the imperial family by Venetians led to a dangerous conflict, especially as Byzantium had depended on Venice for its naval strength. After a Byzantine retaliatory attack on Kerkyra, John exiled the Venetian merchants from Constantinople. But this produced further retaliation, and a Venetian fleet of 72 ships plundered Rhodes, Shios, Somos, Lesbos, Andros, and captured Cephalonia in the Ionian Sea. Eventually, John was forced to come to terms. The war was costing him more than it was worth, and he was not prepared to transfer funds from the Imperial land forces to the navy for the construction of new ships. John reconfirmed the Treaty of 1082 in August 1126. War with the Hungarians and Serbs 1127-1129 Chronology Uncertain War with the Hungarians and Serbs 1127-1129 Chronology Uncertain John's marriage to the Hungarian princess Piroska involved him in the dynastic struggles of the Kingdom of Hungary. In giving asylum to almost a blinded claimant to the Hungarian throne, John aroused the suspicion of the Hungarians. The Hungarians, led by Stephen Roman II, then invaded Byzantium's Balkan provinces in 1127, with hostilities lasting until 1129. However, an alternative chronology has been suggested, with the Hungarian attack and Byzantine retaliation taking place in 1125, with a renewal of hostilities in 1126. Sean launched a punitive raid against the Serbs, who had dangerously aligned themselves with Hungary, many of whom were rounded up and transported to Nicomedia in Asia Minor to serve as military colonists. This was done partly to cow the Serbs into submission. Serbia was, at least nominally, a Byzantine protectorate, and partly to strengthen the Byzantine frontier in the east against the Turks. The Serbs were forced to acknowledge Byzantine suzerainty once again. The Serbian campaign may have taken place between two distinct phases in the war against Hungary. The Hungarians attacked Pograd, Nishan Sofia, John, who was near Philippopolis in Thrace, counterattacked, supported by a naval flotilla operating on the Danube. After a challenging campaign, the details of which are obscure, the Emperor managed to defeat the Hungarians and their Serbian allies at the fortress of Haram or Kraman, which is the modern Nova Palankar. Many Hungarian troops were killed when a bridge they were crossing collapsed as they were fleeing from a Byzantine attack. Following this, the Hungarians renewed hostilities by attacking Brunetro, which was immediately rebuilt by John. For the Byzantine military successes, Troyan Yates mentioned several engagements resulted in a restoration of peace. The Byzantines were confirmed in their control of Branetro, Bulgaria, and Zemun, and they also recovered the region of Sirmium called Frangikorion in Chorniates, which had been Hungarian since the 1060s. The Hungarian pretender almost died in 1129, removing the major source of friction. War of Attrition against the Anatolian Turks 1120, 1130-35, 1139-40 War of Attrition against the Anatolian Turks 1120, 1130-35, 1139-40 Early in John's reign, the Turks were pressing forward against the Byzantine frontier in Western Asia Minor. In 1119, the Seljuks had cut the land route to the city of Italia on the southern coast of Anatolia. John Roman II and Naxx actually grand domestic besieged and recaptured Leodicea in 1119 and took Sosopolis by storm in 1120, reopening land communication with Italia. This route was especially important as it also led to Cilicia and the Crusader states of Syria. 
Following the end of hostilities with Hungary, John was able to concentrate on Asia Minor during most of his remaining years. He undertook annual campaigns against the Danish Mandate Emirates in Malta Mel 18 on the Upper Euphrates from 1130 to 1135. Thanks to his energetic campaigning, Turkish attempts at expansion in Asia Minor were halted and John prepared to take the fight to the enemy. In order to restore the region to Byzantine control, he led a series of well-planned and executed campaigns against the Turks, one of which resulted in the reconquest of the ancestral home of the Komnenoid, Kasamanu Kastra Komnenen. He then left a garrison of 2,000 men at Gangra. John quickly earned a formidable reputation as a wall-breaker, taking one stronghold after another from his enemies. Regions that had been lost to the Empire since the Battle of Manscut were recovered and garrisoned. Yet resistance, particularly from the Danish men of the northeast, was strong, and the difficult nature of holding the new conquest is illustrated by the fact that Castamonu was recaptured by the Turks even as John was in Constantinople celebrating its return to Byzantine rule. John persevered, however, and Castamonu soon changed hands once more. In the spring of 1139, the emperor campaigned with success against Turks, probably nomadic Turkomans, who were raiding the regions along the Sangarios River, striking their means of subsistence by driving off their herds. He then marched for the final time against the Danishman Turks, his army proceeding along the southern coast of the Black Sea through Bithynia and Paphlagornia. The breakaway Byzantine regime of Constantine, Gabras and Trebizond was ended, and the region of Chaldi brought back under direct imperial control. John then besieged but failed to take the city of Nearsi in 1140. The Byzantines were defeated by the conditions rather than by the Turks, the weather was very bad, large numbers of the army's horses died, and provisions became scarce. Campaigning in Cilicia in Syria 1137-1138 Campaigning in Cilicia in Syria 1137-1138 In the Levant, the emperor sought to reinforce Byzantine claims to suzerainty over the Crusader states and to assert his rights over Antioch. In 1137 he conquered Tarsus, Adana and Mopsitra from the Principality of Armenia in Cilicia, and in 1138 Prince Levana of Armenia and most of his family were brought as captives to Constantinople. This opened the route to the Principality of Antioch, where Raymond of Poitiers, Prince of Antioch, and Jocelyn Roman II, Count of Edessa, recognised themselves as vassals of the Emperor in 1137. Even Raymond Roman II, the Count of Tripoli, hastened northwards to pay homage to John, repeating the homage that his predecessor had given John's father in 1109. They then followed a joint campaign as John led the armies of Byzantium, Antioch, and Edessa against Muslim Syria. Aleppo proved too strong to attack, but the fortresses of Bala, Biza, Athib, Mora, al Niman, and Kafortab were taken by assault. Although John fought hard for the Christian cause in the campaign in Syria, his allies Prince Raymond of Antioch and Count Jocelyn Roman II of Edessa remained in their camp playing dice and feasting instead of helping to press the siege of the city of Shazor. The Crusader princes were suspicious of each other and of John, and neither wanted the other to gain from participating in the campaign. Raymond also wanted to hold on to Antioch, which he had agreed to hand over to John if the campaign was successful in capturing Aleppo, Shazar, Holmes, and Homa. Latin and Muslim sources described John's energy and personal courage in prosecuting the siege. The city was taken, but the citadel defied us all. The Emir of Shazar offered to pay a large indemnity, become John's vassal, and pay yearly tribute. John had lost all confidence in his allies, and a Muslim army under Zengi was approaching to try to relieve the city, therefore the emperor reluctantly accepted the offer. The emperor was distracted by a Seljuk raid on Cilicia and developments in the west where he was pursuing a German alliance directed against the threat posed by the Normans of Sicily. Jocelyn and Raymond conspired to delay the promised handover of Antioch's citadel to the emperor, stirring up popular unrest in the city directed at John and the local Greek community. John had little choice but to leave Syria with his ambitions only partially realised. Final Campaigns 1142 Final Campaigns 1142 in early 1142, Dijon campaigned against the Seljuks of Iconium to secure his lines of communication through Italia Antola. During this campaign, his eldest son and co-emperor Alexios died of a fever. Having secured his route, John embarked on a new expedition into Syria determined to reduce Antioch to direct imperial rule. This expedition included a planned pilgrimage to Jerusalem on which he intended to take his army. King Folk of Jerusalem, fearing that the Emperor's presence with overwhelming military force would constrain him to make an act of homage and formally recognise Byzantine suzerainty over his kingdom, begged the Emperor to bring only a modest escort. Folk cited the inability of his largely barren kingdom to support the passage of a substantial army. This lukewarm response resulted in John Roman II deciding to postpone his pilgrimage. John descended rapidly on northern Syria, forcing Jocelyn Roman II of Edessa to render hostages, including his daughter, as a guarantee of his good behaviour. He then advanced on Antioch, demanding that the city and his citadel be surrendered to him. Raymond of Poitiers played for a time, putting the proposal to the vote of the Antochian General Assembly. 
With the season well advanced, John decided to take his army into winter quarters in Silesia, proposing to renew his attack on Antioch the following year. Death and Succession Having prepared his army for a renewed attack on Antioch, John amused himself by hunting wild boar on Mount Taurus in Cilicia, where he accidentally cut himself on the hand with a poisoned arrow. John initially ignored the wound and it became infected. He died a number of days after the accident on 8 April 1143, probably of septicemia. It has been suggested that John was assassinated by a conspiracy within the units of his army of Latin origins who were unhappy of fighting the co-religionists of Antioch and who wanted to place his pro-Western son Manuel on the throne. However, there is very little overt support for this hypothesis in the primary sources. John's final action as emperor was to choose Manuel, the younger of his surviving sons, to be his successor. John is recorded as citing two main reasons for choosing Manuel over his older brother Isaac, Isaac's raspability and the courage that Manuel had shown on campaign at Neo Caesarea. Another theory alleges that the reason for this choice was the aim of prophecy, which foretold that John's successor should be one whose name began with an M. Fittingly, John's close friend John Laxarch, although he is recorded as having tried hard to persuade the dying emperor that Essex was the better candidate to succeed, was instrumental in ensuring that Manuel's assumption of power was free from any overt opposition. The Legacy of John Roman II Historian John Berkemey argued that John's reign was the most successful of the Comenian period. In the development of the Comenian army 1081-1180, he stresses the wisdom of John's approach to warfare, which focused on sieges rather than risking pitched battles. Beckermeyer argues that John's strategy of launching annual campaigns with limited, realistic objectives was a more sensible one than that followed by his son Manuel. According to this view, John's campaigns benefited the Byzantine Empire because they protected the empire's heartland, which lacked reliable borders while gradually extending its territory in Asia Minor. The Turks were forced onto the defensive while John kept his diplomatic situation relatively simple by allying with the Holy Roman Emperor against the Normans of Sicily. Overall, it is clear that John Roman II Comnenos left the empire a great deal better off than he had found it. By the time of his death, substantial territories had been recovered, and the goals of the recovery of control over central Anatolia and the re-establishment of a frontier on the Euphrates seemed achievable. However, the Greeks of the interior of Anatolia were becoming increasingly accustomed to Turkish rule and often found it preferable to that of Byzantium. Also, though it was relatively easy to extract submission and admissions of vassalage from the Anatolian Turks, Serbs and Crusader states of the Levant converting these relationships into concrete gains for the security of the empire had proven elusive. These problems were left for his gifted and mercurial son, Manuel, to attempt to solve. Family John Roman to Caminos married Princess Piroska of Hungary renamed Irene, a daughter of King Ladislaus and NBSB of Hungary in 1104. The marriage was intended as compensation for the loss of some territories to King Coloman of Hungary. She played little part in government, devoting herself to piety and a large brood of children. Irene died on 13 August, 1134, and was later venerated as Saint Irene. John Roman II and Irene had eight children. 1. Alexios Comnenos, October 1106, summer 1142, co-emperor from 1119 to 1142. 2. Maria Comin, twin to Alexios, who married John Roger Dalcinos. 3. Andrew Nicholas Comnenos, died 1142. 4. Anna Comnene after 1149, who married the Admiral Stephen Con de Stefanos, who died in battle in 1149. The couple had four children. 5. Asik Comnene was after 1154, raised to Sebastocrita in 1122. He was superseded in the succession in favour of Manuel in 1143, married Tyson and had several children. 6. Theodore Comnene before May 1157, who married the military commander Manuel Onemas, who was killed in action, after which she entered a monastery. The couple had at least four children. 7. Eudokia Komnene before 1150, who married the military commander Theodore Vatatsis. She had at least six children, but died early. 8. Manuel and MBSP A. Komnenos, 28 November 1821, September 1180, became emperor and reigned 1143-1180.